Hey, I'm John Cannell, and today on Preppy Kitchen, we're making an easy, delicious three ingredient fudge. So let's get started. First off, grab your chocolate. This is a giant bar. I've already used half of it, and I'm using a big chunk of it today. Oof, I said to show you. Give this a chop, and the most important thing is just to have nice, even, small sized pieces. You don't want a giant piece of chocolate that's gonna take so long to melt that everything else burns. If you want, you can use chocolate chips for this recipe. I've definitely done this before and it turns out just fine, but chocolate is the main star ingredient of this. So choose a wonderful chocolate that you really love. I will tell you that bar chocolate tends to be like higher in cocoa butter, tastes a little bit better. It's a nicer quality, usually. There are exceptions to this. In addition, you can also choose the type of chocolate you want. This recipe will work with anything. Milk chocolate, semi-sweet, bittersweet. So choose any combination that you like. Today, I'm gonna do about half semi-sweet. It's a really nice chocolate bar. And half bittersweet. It's gonna give me just more chocolate flavor, less sugar. I really wanna taste the chocolate up front. My semi-sweet's all chopped up. Time for my bittersweet bars. Much more dainty and <laughs> like, appropriately sized. I saw that giant chocolate bar online and um, I literally just had to buy it. It reminded me of these giant chocolate Easter bunnies and Santas my parents would get me when I was little and I had to have it for nostalgic reasons. All right, chop this up and we're ready to go on to the next step. If you are chopping, mind your fingers. Don't go too fast. This recipe is delicious, but you won't enjoy it if you're like nursing a wound. My chocolate's all chopped. Our third ingredient barely counts. It's a teaspoon of softened butter that we're just gonna run across our parchment paper so we can make sure that there is no chance of sticking. It's almost optional though because most parchment papers are fairly nonstick. I need to talk about the container. You wanna grab an eight inch square container. A nine inch one will work too. It doesn't have a thinner layer of fudge, so it'll be fine. You should completely line this with parchment paper. I mean, you could use foil in a pinch, but the paper will come off much more easily. And if you don't line your pan, you're gonna be so sad when your fudge is really stuck. Pop that in and we're on to the next step. Grab a medium saucepan and now we're gonna transfer all of our ingredients inside, starting with your chopped chocolate. And at this point, I should tell you, there are many different types of fudge recipes. This is like the easiest one you could make and it's really delicious. There's different ones that involve like making a candy and you're folding the chocolate in, etc. And those are also great, but I find when you wanna make fudge, it's usually like kind of the holiday season and you are in a rush and do not have time to deal with all the nonsense that comes with handling chocolate and candy. So think of this as like your cheat fudge. It really only takes a few minutes to make and it's foolproof. The star that makes this possible is my favorite sweetened condensed milk. This is one of the most amazing inventions ever and almost like milk caramel already. A lot of you know I'm obsessed with dulce de leche and this is basically dulce de leche before it's been cooked. If you pop this into like boiling water and just let it cook for a while, it will magically turn into like a caramel milk amazing solution. We're gonna use two 14 ounce cans of this amazing, delicious, milky solution. This deliciousness is ready to go over low heat and we are gonna stir constantly until it is all melted. It's very important. If you go anything above low, the chocolate or the sweetened condensed milk could burn and that ruins the texture of the fudge. So low and slow is the way to go. Low heat and now we're just gonna stir, stir, stir. And by the way, this is a plain classic fudge, like my family likes, but if you wanted to, you could add so many things to this. The first one, which I'm only not doing because this is mostly for Lachlan and George, who are six, just one teaspoon of espresso powder will really amp up the chocolate flavor and you will not taste any coffee. It's just like a chocolate amplifier. You could also add in two teaspoons of vanilla or even like rum or bourbon, maybe even go up to a tablespoon or two. I would do that towards the end though, just before we pour this out into our container. And some people love like a nutty, crunchy fudge. You could add chopped toasted pecans or walnuts, even almonds if you wanted to. And I might do maybe like half a cup or more, sprinkling some inside after the chocolate's melted and then sprinkling some on top for decoration as well. You could add peppermint that's been crushed up, like anything, it's gonna be so good. 
This is melting really quickly. We're just gonna keep stirring over that low heat until it's nice and completely smooth. As you stir, you'll see this gets a little bit thicker. It's gonna get thicker and thicker as you go on, but just keep stirring until the chocolate is almost completely melted. A couple little bits here and there is fine. The residual heat in this fudge will melt everything, but you just don't wanna have lumps and bumps all over the place. The one thing that can go wrong is the chocolate burning, so just keep stirring and especially like go to the bottom, I'm using a spatula, and bring it all the way up. So I'm like kind of almost folding it together so that the bottom is getting moved to the top. This is ready to pour now. You have to work quickly here, so oof, get that fudge into your lined container because once it's all melted, it starts setting up pretty quickly. That looks great, except it also looks crazy. So now you're going to press it down into a flat layer and then we can smooth the top. And here the fudge is off heat and it is really starting to solidify and set up. My fudge is nice and smooth. This gets chilled for at least two hours in the fridge or three hours if you're just leaving it on the counter. Then I'll show you how to cut and wrap it. My fudge is set up, it's nice and firm. So remove it from your pan, so easy. I love parchment paper. And then we're gonna just undo this. And I have a confession to make. That scene you saw with me buttering the paper, I did it after this was all set. I forgot to butter the paper. So it comes out really easily. Look at that. No butter needed. Hmm. But if you want the extra insurance, go ahead and use it. It's time to cut our fudge. You can use any size pieces you want. If you want one mega piece for you and you're having that kind of day, I will not judge you, you enjoy. But for me, I like to have like one inch squares. So cut down. I'm gonna cut this into bars and then into cubes, but you can see it cuts beautifully and it smells so good. It's really enticing. All cut up and there's one thing you need to know. Do not leave this in the refrigerator for too long before you cut it. Otherwise it'll be like not rock hard, but very firm. And really it just needs two hours to chill, maybe even a little bit less. If you wanna be crafty, these make such cute little gifts. Chocolate gifts, who would say no? Just kind of experiment and see what size paper you need to wrap your present and then wrap it up like a little tiny gift. You could even use twine just like ribbon and they are cute as can be. This fudge is the perfect mega head treat. It lasts for up to six months in your freezer, like a week or two at room temperature or three weeks in the fridge. Just make sure it's stored in an airtight container or nicely wrapped. And by the way, these are just as delicious straight out of the pan. That is so good. The texture is perfect. It's just firm enough to have like a pleasant bite and then it dissolves into like this liquid chocolate amazingness in your mouth. I hope you get a chance to make this recipe and if you like this video, check out my chocolate playlist.